January 28, 1986. NASA prepares to launch a rocket into space with six astronauts, along with, for the first time in history, a school teacher who planned to deliver live lessons from space to classrooms across the United States. But only the night before, with temperatures plunging to two degrees Celsius, Roger Boisoli and four colleagues joined a teleconference call, practically screaming at NASA. Hi, is this NASA? Stop the launch! You see, Boisoli was an engineer at Morton Tyrecol, a contractor which supplied NASA with O-rings, which were critical rubber seals used in joints between the boosters. Boyce Julie and his team compiled launch temperature data against the severity of O-ring erosion. They found that the colder the weather during the launch, the worse the O-ring erosion became. Above 20 degrees C, the risk of catastrophic O-ring failure is about one in a hundred. It's not great, but it's nothing too crazy. Then if you drop it down to 12 degrees C, the risk increases to one in 15. And if you drop it down to two degrees Celsius, the temperature at this launch, the risk jumps to around one in four. And with only 24 previous launches, but NASA argued that these statistical plots relied heavily on extrapolated data. And with only 24 previous shuttle launches, the sample size was just too small to show any definitive trend. And on top of all that, at this point, there was just too much money on the line to pull the plug, so NASA took the risk. It was a bitter cold but sparkling clear morning at Cape Canaveral. Here at the last seconds of the countdown. Four, three, two, one, and liftoff. Liftoff. Of minutes into flight. The rocket exploded 73 seconds into flight, killing everyone on board. Wiley's predictions using simple scatter plots and trend lines was tragically proven correct. The point is, living in a pure math fantasy land where everything is perfect, ignoring all real world complexities, can lead to death. So you might not like statistics, but it also saves millions of lives every year. So here are the seven levels of statistics, and you can let me know in the comments which level you think you are. Level one. Ricky Tiki Bobby Wobbin. I don't know who made this pie chart, but they were definitely on level one. On this level, you'll learn how to count and collect simple data and maybe even plot a bar chart. This is the bare minimum to be able to function properly in society. So if you're below this level, then do the world a favor and go phone up all your friends, ask them what their favorite color is, tally up all the numbers, and then go on YouTube and look up how to make a bar chart. Level two. Basic tools. If level one is essential for human function, then level two is essential for watching a debate. Because when Ben Shapiro starts spitting facts, then feelings are gonna go out the window. Mm, statistically speaking, 90% of Sigma males watch Skibbity Toilet. Excellent argument, approved. Or if you don't know what mean, median, or mode is, or how to read a pie chart, then you should probably apply for a job at McDonald's. Level three, inference rules. On this level, you'll be shown how to set up a hypothesis and then test that hypothesis using data. You'll probably use the binomial distribution, the normal distribution, and maybe the Poisson distribution, depending on what kind of data you have. And from this, you'll begin to make actual conclusions. This is where most people start to hate statistics because for some reason, school systems haven't caught up to the fact that you'll never be dealing with real world data on a piece of paper. It's almost always done on a computer. You just give it to chat GPT and it'll sort it out for you. But in school, you have to do each calculation one by one meticulously on your four function calculator, which just makes statistics slow and boring. Level four, introduction to statistics. It turns out that the previous three levels were more like a trailer and now we're in university, we can actually start to learn real statistics as its own independent course. It's a very strange form of prolonged self torture. And I imagine that the sort of people that do this are the same sort of people that actually read the term terms and conditions before clicking accept. You'll learn a lot of mathematical terminology like independently and identically distributed random variables with a density function f of x, perform a t-test or a z-test with confidence intervals and p-values. All of it sounds really smart, but really you're just poking around with data. Level five, master's level. Thankfully at this point, you'll be working mainly on computers because in order to tackle generalized linear models or larger, messier data sets, you'll need a GPU to perform like a gazillion calculations per second. And they'll probably even let you use it in an exam because at this point, even chat GPT can't be asked. Here you'll learn about regression analysis, multivariate techniques, Bayesian thinking, and ANOVA and MANOVA, whatever that means. If you know what heteroscedacity is, then you're probably on level five. Heteroscedacity is when a man and a woman love each other very much. <laughs> 
and imagine you're trying to predict someone's weight based on height. If your predictions are very accurate for short people but very inaccurate for tall people, then that's heteroscedacity. Level six, professional stats man. Congratulations, you now work in an air conditioned office with a lower middle class income. You'll probably be the only one in an office full of normal people who have not a clue what you do because to them, you just look like a nerd who stares at numbers all day. But at least you have a nice job title to brag about to your friends when they ask you what it is you do. Ooh, I'm a senior data analyst, look at me. But really, you spend most of your pathetic days auditing large data sets for inconsistencies, duplicates, and missing values. Level seven, Batty Statty Math Man. So I looked it up and it turns out that statistics Olympiads are actually a real thing. So if you've won one of these, then you're automatically in level seven. Also, if you've got a Fields Medal, then you're probably on level seven too. There's a broad range of fields that you might be working in at this point, like healthcare, theoretical statistics, quantum computing, or artificial intelligence. But what connects you all together is the nerd sweat that builds up over time after not showering for a month. And the fact that you do statistics. You might be working on random matrix theory, for example, which is basically where you try to predict the future using a truckload of data. Statistically speaking, 91% of people giggle every time they fart. And that's also the same percentage of people who are not subscribed to the channel. And because correlation is exactly equal to causation, you should just grow up and subscribe, you little fart gigglers.